What's your story? Whether you're a client or an independent financial advisor, we know you face many important decisions that can affect your and your client's long-term financial success. Welcome to the WIN Podcast. What's important now with Corey Hymanson, accredited investment fiduciary and president of Hymanson Wealth Advisors. In this podcast, Corey helps you identify your goals and objectives through financial education and comprehensive planning while inspiring you to make better behavioral decisions in your personal finance. With a twist on pop culture and current events, join us as we explore growth and protection strategies for individuals, advisors, and their businesses. Come and discover what's important to you now. Hello and welcome to the Win Podcast with Corey Hymanson. If you've been with us for a while and you're an active listener, or if this is your first time, I'm just going to tell you right now, hang on. <laughs> it's, you're going to want to hold on because this podcast <laughs> is something a little different. Uh, Corey, this is fantastic. I love the title, How I Invest My Money and Mechanical Bull Riding Tips. <laughs> What in the world are we talking about today? <laughs> Seems pretty straightforward, doesn't it? Of course, they go together like hand and glove. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when I think of investing, the first thing I think of is a mechanical bull. There you go. Out of <laughs> full disclosure, I do not own a cowboy hat or cowboy boots. Oh, okay. But I think I've got pretty good knowledge today on multiple topics. Okay. So, I, you know, my mind races and goes to a lot of different places, right? Um but I, I want to know how I invest my money. That Are you talking about you personally? Yeah, that's where we're going today. Okay. Uh, a lot of people I visit with or sit in front of, you know, that question comes up. They either say, Corey, just tell me how to do things or, or even better, how do you invest? I want to do what you do, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and so if you're tuning in today to get <clears throat> specific, brilliant, top secret, stock picks or concepts, I'm not going to disappoint you because I'm going to deliver a process, which I think is way more valuable than just giving somebody a specific ticker symbol today, if you follow me. Yeah, absolutely. And here's the thing is that you and I have talked about process on multiple podcasts because it's not like it's a one and done, right? I mean, it's not something that you're just cooking up in a microwave and saying, oh, here we go. I'm going to serve whatever comes out you have a process very specifically because that's the best way to do it, right? So I, how does it start? How, how yeah. does your process start when you look at this? And, and along that line, I would say, I think anything long-term successful in life requires a process, whether that's uh, a relationship with somebody mm -hmm. or running a business or building a business or investing, any of these things, you got to have a, a process or a system or, you know, all the above, or that's how I think of it anyway. Yeah. And, and as a guy, dude, I'm totally guilty of not necessarily thinking about a process all the time. When I'm building something, I'm thinking a process. But when it came to like our wedding, I was like, let's just do it. <laughs> that was the wrong answer, by the way. I, I learned very right, quickly. Right. <laughs> and, and so as I was thinking about this topic today, I, I thought, well, oh boy, we don't want to just do 14 steps of the process and talk mm -hmm. in a monotone voice. That's going to be boring. Right. Yeah. And so I thought back to, to something in my life. That's a pretty cool story. And it ties into process. And here comes the mechanical bull. I can <clears throat> feel it. Right? So why wouldn't we go into the mechanical bull story? That's right? right. Come okay. on. <laughs> so we have to go back in time. It's my senior year of college. And, and three of my buddies and I somehow concoct this plan for spring break. We're going to drive to Las Vegas. Seems like a good idea. I don't know. But That's anyway, plan. Yeah. one of the guys gets a car rented and I don't even know how we did that because wow. I, in, in today's world, you certainly got to be 25 years old or something. And we were uh -huh. not. So somehow we managed to rent this car. We drive straight through no stops all the way to Las Vegas <laughs> and we're there for a couple of days having a good time. And the one guy's dad lived in Phoenix. So one of the days we said, hey, we'll just, let's go down there. So we go to Phoenix and meet his dad and his dad says, boy, you know, you guys are from Iowa, the Midwest. I've got a challenge for you. You've got to go to this place down on whatever street. And essentially it was a, I don't even know if you call it a dance hall or a bar or you know, whatever you want to call it, a place mm -hmm. that has a mechanical bowl and line dancing and all that stuff. We get there. And of course the bowl is not running that night. It's a week night. And, and uh. the employees are like, no, we don't run it un until the weekend. Oh, okay. So doom and gloom sets in. And eventually one of the employees finds out that we're from Iowa and he says, you know what? I'm going to do you guys a solid. I'm, I'm going to fire this thing up and let you ride it. 
<laughs> All right. So, you know, here we go. Game on. We're, we're thinking this is going to be pretty easy. Yeah. And the guy starts giving us instructions and we are not paying attention. And, and my buddy gets on first and he makes the cardinal error or mistake of, of looking over at us, giving us the thumbs up with his free hand <laughs> no. as the thing starts to move. <laughs> Instantly, it, it, it does two quick maneuvers and he smacks his face on the front of the mechanical bowl. Of and course. We've got blood. You know, so stuff's getting real, real quick. <laughs> this also brings the attention of everybody else in the building is now coming over to watch the ensuing carnage. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, Absolutely. So suddenly, they're looking at me like I'm, I'm next. And, I, and now, this is where the process comes in. In my mind, I'm racing through the steps of what this, this gentleman told me to do and not do to survive this. Mm -hmm. Long story short, I get on there. I don't get bloodied. Ride the thing for what I feel is an eternity. And, and I get off and he goes, yeah, you made it three seconds. <laughs> so, you know, the point being... When you're in a difficult situation or any situation, you better have a plan and a system to focus on steps. So let's go back to, to the main question here. How does, how does Corey Hymanson invest his money? It's a system. Okay. And my first step of that system uses that same type of word, systematic. Every single month, I'm going to invest in three ways in a qualified or a retirement type account. So that's for the future. Mm -hmm. Also in a non-qualified or a non-retirement account, that can be just a bucket of money you can use for any purpose, anytime. And number three, I invest in myself every month. Okay. And, and yeah, that, that's the, the common reaction I get from people when I say this. What does that mean? That means just improving yourself. You know, read something, learn something, you know, sharpen your mind, expand your horizons, maybe try something new, step off a ledge, you know, whatever that means, not in a bad way. <laughs> yeah. I always use that phrase, but it doesn't really sound very good. Um, successful investing, success in a lot of things in life doesn't happen overnight unless you're really, really damn lucky. Yeah. And so the process is what gets you outcomes. Yeah. I mean, that it makes perfect sense. I, I know that you said that you say that stepping off a ledge is a, is, is a weird phrase, but I, I just liken it to one step, one step in front of another one. How do, I, how do I say that? Now, see, now I'm lost on mine, you know, just putting one foot in front of another, taking one step at a time, you know, a great journey, I think is the, the phrase, a great journey starts with one step, right? Right. And that's, and, that's so important. And, and I know some of these things are things we've said before in other episodes and when markets get turbulent or, and, and by turbulent, we mean down, right? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> turbulent up doesn't bother anybody. Turbulent down is, <laughs> yeah. is, is when people get freaked out and, yeah. and emotions set in. We've talked about emotions too. And so that's the next thing I want to say is good investing along with decision-making in life has to really be emotion free. Now I'm not saying you got to march through life like a zombie or a robot and have no fun emotions or anything, but you got to think through, if you've got a good process in place, don't let scary stuff or things you read freak you out all the time. And so I, I think that's the same thing. You know, when I took my turn on that bull, if I had have been thinking about the guy ahead of me that got bloodied, I probably wouldn't have had even the marginal outcome that I did get out of that event. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that you just got to believe. Well, here's the thing. I, I'm just going to step in because I think that draws such a good parallel. There are times when turbulent markets, you know, people walk away bloodied. And if you're putting yourself on a path that has some um, safety measures in there and you're paying attention and you're listening to the, the expert, like, you know, the, the, the guy that was teaching you how to ride the, ride the bull in the first place. If you're listening to those small tips and, and little things from somebody who actually knows what they're talking about, like, you know, that's why people tune into this podcast. You're not going to get as bloodied as the previous guy or the next guy necessarily. If you're, you know, taking those steps to protect yourself. That's, oh, that's perfect. I mean, that's perfectly right. And, and it's also the details, you know, <laughs> the key detail that guy taught us that day was keep your head forward, looking at the front of where the bull's head would be. You know, mm -hmm. that was mistake number one, my buddy made, but I kept my head there and it helped a little bit. 
you know. Yeah. <laughs> but that leads to the next thing. It, it's just balance. Mm. Every mm-hmm. one of us need, and sure, on the bowl you need balance, but I'm, I'm talking life. You need balance in your work life situation. You need balance in your investments. That can be diversification. Heck, I mean, I'm not a pilot, but if I'm flying an airplane or riding in one, seems pretty obvious that those wings are pretty balanced most of that flight. You yeah. know, that, and balance can even be uh, paying down your debt. You know, I'm not here to say every nickel's got to be invested. Mm-hmm. Have a balance of maybe budgeting your money. I don't know. I, I hate to use that word because I don't know if everybody really needs a budget. You're either a saver or a spender, but have a focused plan for, hey, I'm going to make my payments or make some extra payments to pay down my debt, but I'm also going to build up some other money on the side so I can you know do the things I want to do or cover scary things that just come out of left field once in a while. Yeah. Yep. Well, I don't know who coined the phrase first or when it was put into script a long time ago, but um, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Well, it's, you know, there's vice versa on that, right? The, the, the story of the grasshopper and the ant, same thing. You, you can't have too much of one thing. You have to have that balance, just like you're talking about. Right. And that's something, especially here in the Midwest, that a lot of individuals are guilty of. And those are the people that that are in the farming industry. Yeah. You know, we talked about farming last episode, but um, land is a very valuable asset. Mm-hmm. And sometimes people make so much focus on, I just need to buy land, 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 or, you know, or apartment building, apartment building, apartment building, you know, that might work, but it, it makes things more volatile and you're susceptible to more risk. So spread it around. Even if, if you think that's the golden ticket, maybe you need a gold ticket and a silver ticket and a bronze ticket. Mm-hmm. All right. So what is the next step in this process? I feel like I'm, I'm sort of repeating myself from other episodes, but you know, this is, this is really key and good stuff. It, you got to be optimistic. Mm -hmm. I've done this so many years and I can go back in time and the people that felt like they didn't get the outcomes they deserved in investing were people that were pessimistic the first day I met them. They're, you know, they're people that their glass of water, yeah, maybe it's half full, but it's probably lukewarm. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I mean, I mean, if there's things in life you can't control, man, you might as well be optimistic because at least you'll feel better about the whole event. Yeah. There are certainly things we can control in life, and, and that starts with attitude. You know, my mom and I think I think her mother were famous for saying that. You can always control your attitude. And so evaluate your situation, whether it's scary on a bowl or if it's uh, bumps at a job or in life, and, and just keep forward. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, again, it's positivity breeds positivity, and negativity breeds negativity, and, it, and even internally doesn't necessarily it's not that you're being influenced or influencing others which you normally are but if you are just sitting there in the mud and you're complaining well you have a choice stand up and get out of there or or you can sit there and continue to complain you're just going to still be in the mud exactly and and even going back to the airplane you know we've talked about this too there's there's a destination it doesn't matter if you're on vacation or flying uh, there's going to be turbulence there's going to be potholes mm-hmm. but to keep your eye on the prize Stick to the routine. And and that leads us to our next point, which is trust the professionals who have the experience and the knowledge. You know, when we were standing in that honky tonk or whatever we want to call it in Phoenix, you know, if we would have given that instructor five more minutes of our attention and been focused and really thought it through, we could have had a much better outcome because Mm -hmm. we had no idea what we were doing. We just assumed we could do it. And I think that's a, a major flaw. And we've seen it in our world too, in uh, the internet bubble. You know, there's times yep. where uh, optimism of in, of individual investors gets a little over enthusiastic because they think they're smarter than they really are. And that doesn't have to just be your brother-in-law, you know what I mean? Or your next yep. door neighbor. It, it It just runs rampant when things are too easy. And that's where, again, trust the people that do their specific profession day in and day out. And so where the question started when that client sits in front of me and says, Corey, how do you invest your money? They're sort of on the right path because what the question should be is, I trust in your judgment, what kind of plan would you put together for me would be the better question. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it's funny because there's a just a microscopic view of, of what you just described. I've got a buddy who, who one of his family members uh, was, I think it was in February, January, February had, I don't know if it was Dogecoin or one of those, one of those coins that he had put some money in and all of a sudden it went really high. And so his, his small investment of hundred or 200 bucks ended up being two or $3,000. And he was super excited about that. And then of course he's the expert on, <laughs> he's the expert on, on those types of coins. And then, you know, for months we had to hear, Oh, I, I did this and I did that. And all of a sudden I can't remember what the other coin was, but it was like a Lumi coin, a Lumen coin or something went from whatever it was down to zero. I think, I think within a day it was at point zero 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 three cents <laughs> and he lost all that same money because he had just kind of moved things around and he hasn't said much about being the expert anymore. Corey, I, I don't know if that ever happens, but yeah, it's, it's interesting to see that contrast very quickly happen. <laughs> well, and I think sometimes people sit in front of me too and they think, Oh, Corey, you know, he has this figured out. I bet he keeps all the really, really good ideas for himself and he, and he doesn't share, you know, and that is, the opposite end of the spectrum. I use, for my own investment accounts, I use the same research that I use if I was helping you, mm -hmm. Eric, or the next person or the next person. You know, a good idea or a good process is good for more than just one person. You know, I'm not saying everybody's cookie cutter, but if we really like large cap stocks, let's say, that's a good fit in some moderation for essentially a lot of people we sit in front of. And, and we are not here to try and front run and and make all the money off of great investments while everybody else gets the mediocre ones. I mean, that's not what this is about. This is about essentially never running out of cash flow mm -hmm. for somebody. And that's in my personal portfolio. That's my goal too. I want to have cash flow f until the uh, the last breath I I take. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, that's that's perfect. And and the professionals know a lot of the the nuances too of you know in the investment field. Let's say. It's not just about which investments to pick. It's about being efficient with taxes, mm -hmm. gifting at the right time, you know, doing charitable gifts from your from your retirement accounts so that you don't pay taxes. And, you know, so many little things is what results in the successful journey. Not just, hey, I had a great stock tip and it worked for six months. Because arguably, now this is kind of a crazy statement, but I'll say it, a lot of people that have made money in individual stock picking probably were lucky or, or more lucky than good. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. hundred percent. Whether it's the stocks or like I said, the, the, you know, the, the crypto coins that this other guy was doing, he got lucky and then thought right. that luck was genius. And until he realized it wasn't, <laughs> you know, and that's, I think that's just the way it goes for all of us. And in, in, in a way we, we're on the right track and we're doing the right thing or we get lucky with something we're like, Oh man, I I'm really smart at this. And then a wake up call comes and <laughs> realize, okay, maybe it was just a little bit of luck. Well, and, and it's just human nature. Don't you think, you know, if, oh, yeah. if, if you open up a, a lemonade stand and you have a great day, you think, well, tomorrow we're not going to just open up a cookie stand. We're going to open up a lemonade stand again. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and that's the exact same thing with investing in stocks, uh, crypto, you know, heck, Cities like Las Vegas aren't built because everybody's a great gambler yeah. with successful outcomes. <laughs> yeah. 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 They're not. So that's, uh, a, that's a whole nother story that when I was there on that, that college uh, spring break trip, you know, you could play $2 blackjack. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't think you can do anything for $2 out there anymore. I don't know. Yep. I, I stopped playing craps when you couldn't play for less than two bucks because <laughs> that was, that was easy. Yeah, you know, play a little bit of money, <laughs> lose a little, win a little, whatever. That's fine. But Last time I saw, I even saw a table. It was like ten dollars minimum per bet, and I'm like, no, "That's never again." Thank you so much. No, <laughs> that's not fun anymore. <laughs> well, and and arguably, you could even talk about that in today's world. I mean, fantasy football, mm -hmm. uh, gambling on sports. I mean, all this stuff is becoming more mainstream. And sure, it can be entertainment value for some people, but y you know, it's a slippery path for others, and and that's sort of too bad. I'd say I'm not trying to be judgy here, but I just know that there's always going to be things to entice us to try and make money off of as individuals. Mm -hmm. um, and at the end of the day, the story is not different this time. History repeats itself and, and hard work and, and sticking to your knitting and 
going to work and saving and improving yourself each month is, is how you get ahead and, and have a good journey. Absolutely. And, and what bothers me most is I've seen some of these, some of these things that commercials for those sports betting specifically, and they have some sort of star on there saying how easy it is and how much they did this and how much they did that. They're trying to sell something and it just, it bothers me. I don't, I don't even think those should be legal personally, uh, that the commercials to entice people. Um, I mean, sure it's a business and I guess whatever, but it, it does bother me because you do have people that don't have the strongest will and they think, oh, well they're saying it's easy and everybody pretty much makes money doing this. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty good at tying things into random tangents. I know, mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know, in my head, as you're saying that, the first thing I think of is inflation. Currently, or this whole calendar year, everything has been about inflation, inflation. You know, yep. inflation affects some people, but the problem is it, it affects primarily the people on the lower end of the income uh, realm or range or the people that have less income. And, you know, and, and that's difficult. And that, and that sort of likens to what you were talking about, the people that are not disciplined or don't have the wherewithal you know they might start looking to certain things whether it's investing in too risky of a way or gambling or things to try and get ahead the true way to get ahead is to work hard and save and i know not everybody gets dealt the same hand but you know there's no easy ticket out so to speak and i've joked that's my other phrase you know i don't promise rainbows and unicorns it takes hard work, whether you're investing or working or raising kids, whatever it is. Absolutely. Agree a hundred percent. All right. So what's the next step in the process? This is sort of the last step and, it, and, it, and it's just to enjoy the ride because, and I know that sounds crazy, but so many times I see people that, that focus on, on one little piece of the whole puzzle. And, and we've talked about puzzles, Eric, I know that mm -hmm. too, but you know, Focus on the things that make you happy and, and don't stress the things that don't, you know, I mean, yeah. control what you can control and just stick to the plan. And, and remember that, that life is not necessarily about specific numbers. It's about experiences. You know, if I had rode that mechanical bull the full eight seconds and stormed off out of the building to a cheering crowd, that'd have been awesome. But you know what? The story would have been the same as I'm telling it today. If I rode that thing three or four seconds. Heck, it's still a cool story and I'll, and I'll hold that forever. And, you know, I'm not going to dwell on the four seconds. I didn't ride the bull. I'm going to dwell on the three or four that I did. Absolutely. I mean, it, that's three or four seconds more than I've ever ridden a mechanical bull. Cause I haven't gotten on one. I'm too scared. <laughs> <laughs> so you, I mean, this is, this is a cool story. I love that. I love that you did that. And, and I, I want to ask you a question because you, you did bring it up. And so now I'm just going to put it to you. I know that you're great at unplugging. I know that you're great at being able to, I mean, this isn't just stuff that you're spouting off. This is stuff that you try to live on a daily basis. And I know that it, you and I've talked about it before. We're not perfect at it. Nobody is, but why don't you tell me in the audience and, and just kind of give us some, give us some thoughts from your end. When you're seeing this stuff on the news, when you're seeing these things, I mean, you're in this field, you're working this daily. What do you do when you unplug? What do you find enjoyable for yourself that uh, you can just turn off the news and say, you know what, I'm going to do this. And it takes your mind off things. You're really going to laugh at this. It, and, and this is not a question for our audience. This is not a question he gave me ahead of time. This is purely raw right now hitting me raw. <laughs> but and I joke with my staff. They know this is true. When I'm here all week long. It's like putting out fires because we are constantly busy. Mm -hmm. Lots of service, lots of research, lots of client meetings. And so when I get home or even on a weekend, I honestly enjoy just kind of walking around the yard, picking up sticks. <laughs> right, on. right? How crazy is that to unwind? And maybe it's not the exact activity, but it's the letting your mind stray, so to speak, or yes. or or shut off or get away from the way that it has to be driven for 50 hours of the work week. And mm -hmm. I did say 50 because I work at least that many, but I'm still able to try and balance a lot of the fun stuff, you know, on the sides. 
And so sometimes just having something that'll take your mind off it, you know, whether that's reading, picking up sticks, you know, trimming a tree, I, whatever. Um, but I'd say being outdoors, you know, I, I think, and, and I'm not a huge person that's hugging a tree and <laughs> I don't even know where I'm going with that. But what I'm saying is you can appreciate a lot of things if you just look around you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the proverbial stop and smell the roses is not just for literary genius. It it really truly is something that we, I think, all need to strive for. It, it sounds silly to say that, right? But something that we need to actually try to put in our schedule if we have to, to just slow down because this is what life is. It's really fast. It comes at us fast. We get all sorts of information instantly nowadays. And it's nice just to walk around and pick up some sticks. You know, personally, I'm going to put those sticks in a pile and I'm going to cook something over it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that is one thing. And I am really good about is when I get home from work, my phone goes on a counter. It's not in my pocket. It's not nice. at arm's reach, essentially, most of that evening or that weekend. You know, that you can really get drained if you never unplug or unconnect, disconnect from from those things that just constantly throw information at you. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Well, I love that. Unplugging is, is something that I'm terrible at. And so I'm going to take that to heart. And I think tonight I'm just going to put my cell phone in the basket near my front door where my keys are. And, uh, maybe I'm going to leave it there as long as I possibly can. And I'll, maybe it'll be three seconds <laughs> <We'll see. laughs> or I'll, I'll try for the full eight. We'll see. We'll see what happens. There you go. Corey, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much. Any, any other closing thoughts for today? No, you know, we hit a lot of the same stuff in these episodes. I know, but ultimately life isn't as difficult as you think it may have to be. And that's, that's finances or whatever. If you just team up with people that know what they're doing to, to coach you through it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you named the the podcast, the win podcast for a reason. And just a reminder to those that maybe you're new, it's what's important now. That's what win stands for. And Corey, I love the subject matter. I know that we have touched on some things before, but you know, this podcast comes out every two weeks. So it's nice to have those reminders, even if they're just little ones with more nuggets of good information, which I think today was great. So thank you so much for this. I appreciate being uh, here with you because I know I need the reminder. Absolutely. I enjoyed it. You bet. And we want to thank you as well, the listening audience. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to the Win Podcast with Corey Hymanson. If you have not subscribed to the podcast yet, please click the subscribe now button below. This way, when Corey comes out with a new podcast, it'll show up directly on your listening device. And we humbly ask you to share this podcast, rate it, and leave a review, as this actually does help others find the show. Again, thank you so much for listening today. For everyone at Hymanson Wealth Advisors, this is Eric Johnson reminding you to live your best day every day. And we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to the win podcast. What's important now, the show that helps you achieve your financial dreams to ask questions about topics covered during the show, or get a copy of stop doing dumb things with your money by Corey Hymanson. Visit www.hymansonwealth.com or give us a call at 712-472-3867. Don't forget to click the follow button below to be notified when new episodes become available. Securities offered through Securities America, Inc., member FINRA SIPC. Advisory services offered through Securities America Advisors, Inc. Hymanson Wealth Advisors and Securities America are separate entities. 